at the end of all the videos I do, the last thing I usually say is I'm going to keep on fucking bringing it. I've made a commitment to myself and I've made a commitment to the people that watch the videos to keep bringing the absolute best information as it relates to training to get bigger and stronger that you're going to find anywhere. And today's no different. We're fucking bringing it today. We're going to talk about the incline barbell press. Now, before I continue, I want it to be known that anytime I say incline barbell press, I'm referring to performing this exercise on a 45 degree angled bench. Now, most gyms, they have stations that are preset. The benches are fixed. They're non-adjustable. So the bench press is flat. Can't switch that. The incline is generally on a 45 degree angle. You can't switch that. And the overhead is generally set at 90. Now, on that note real quick, I've heard people say some stupid shit along the lines of that if the bench isn't set at 90 degrees, then you're not working the shoulders. And these same idiots will go pick up weights that they got no business using in the first place. They'll arch their back to such a degree that it's like they're on a 70 to 80 degree angle incline in the first place. And what this does for these idiots is it puts the chest in more direct opposition of the resistance. And since the chest is a bigger, stronger muscle, it allows them to lift weights that they have no business lifting in the first place. And in their head, the shoulders did all the work because the bench was set at 90 degrees. It's absolutely fucking retarded. Now the shoulders are going to work anytime you do any type of press, just the demand placed on them will vary based on the direction of effort and the direction of resistance. But that's neither here nor there. What I want to talk about is this. If flat is chest and overhead is shoulders, at which point does the demand go from being heavily being placed on the chest to heavily being placed onto the shoulders? Because a very strong argument could be made that by the time you get to 45 degrees, it's more of a shoulder exercise that happens to work the chest and not an upper chest exercise that just happens to work the shoulders. So there's a couple of things we got to look at, a couple of determining factors to kind of come to our own conclusions. By the end of this, you might say, you know what? The incline barbell press might actually be more of a shoulder exercise than it is an upper pec exercise. So first thing we got to look at is congruency. Path of function, path of resistance. Now, path of resistance is easier to understand, so we'll go over that first. When you're doing a barbell press and you're on planet Earth because of what we call gravity, path of resistance, direction of resistance will always be going down towards the floor. Path of function, we got two muscles that we got to look at here. The upper pec and the front delt. Where do these muscles start and finish? Both of them start on the collarbone, the chest closer to the midline of the body, and both of them end on the upper arm bone, on the humerus. Therefore, as it relates to path of function, these two muscles kind of work together to produce force to promote the same type of function. You can't increase the demand on the upper pec at the expense of the front delt. They're both going to work to some degree. So depending how you do your incline presses in the first place, the front delt is going to be heavily involved to produce force and also stabilize the shoulder as the arm is locked out in the top position to prevent the bar from drifting towards your waist or behind your head. So the front delt is doing a lot of work. If you want to increase the demand on the upper pec based on the path of function, you're going to want to have your elbow closer to your body. This is going to put the upper pec in more of a position to be responsible for the direction of effort to oppose the direction of resistance. As your elbow flares out to the side of your body, you're not increasing the demand on the upper pec anymore, but rather the sternal head of the pec which is now in a position to be more responsible for the direction of effort and bringing the upper arm towards the midline of the body against the resistance. So that's one thing you got to look at there, but does that sound like more of an upper pec exercise or more of a front delt exercise? Something to think about. Next thing we got to look at is what muscle is being stretched the most. The muscle being stretched the most is generally being recruited the most. Now some of this information might overlap, it might be repetitive, but that's good because this will only help illustrate the point further. So since both of these muscles, the upper pec and the front delt, start and finish in pretty much the same spot, you can't increase the demand as it relates to stretching the upper pec more than the front delt because of where these muscles are situated. So even if you're using a relatively closer grip and keeping your elbow tight to your body to increase the demand on the upper pec as you go into a fully stretched position, you're going into a position of shoulder hyperextension and from a relative perspective, the demand being placed on the front delt will be greater than the upper pec because it's a smaller, weaker muscle. So now, this would suggest that if you go through a full range of motion, at least if you lower all the way down to the body, more stress is being placed on the front delt than the upper pec. Does that sound like an upper pec exercise to you? Upper pec dominant? Not really. What muscles being shortened the most? You can't shorten the upper pec to a greater degree than the front delt once again because both of these muscles start on the collarbone 
and finish on the upper arm bone. To put the upper pec in a position to be fully shortened against resistance, the front delt is also going to be shortening against the resistance to the same degree, if not a greater degree. So if you go to full extension when you do your incline presses, irrespective of where your hands are, where you're lowering the bar to, where your elbow is in relation to your body, you can't shorten the upper pec more than the front delt. Does that sound like the incline barbell press is more of an upper pec exercise than a front delt exercise? And the answers are pretty clear to me. But we got to give the incline press a fair shake as being an upper pec exercise. So let's take a look at the point of overload. For this, we have to go to biomechanics. Now with biomechanics, we're talking about the universal law of levers. We got the lever, which in this case is the upper arm bone, the bone that both of these muscles attach to. And the direction of resistance is going down towards the floor. So when does the lever, or when is it perpendicular to the direction of resistance? So what's going on at that position, that point of overload? The shoulder is not in a fully stretched or fully shortened position. Therefore, irrespective of where your hands are on the bar, how wide or narrow your grip is, where you're lowering the bar on the chest, the chest and potentially the upper pec are now in a position to do the most amount of work to overcome the resistance. So all of this would suggest that if you wanted to use the incline barbell press as a tool to build the upper pec, then what you're gonna wanna do is go with a closer, narrower grip, which allows your elbow to be closer to your body so that the upper pec is in a position to be most responsible for the direction of effort to oppose the resistance. And you're gonna to wanna to avoid going through a full range of motion. You go to the bottom, you're increasing the demand on the front delt the most. You go all the way up to the top, the lever is now parallel to the direction of resistance. The upper pec doesn't have to do much work in this position, but the front delt, however, still does to stabilize the load to prevent it from leaning forward or going backwards. So you can use the incline barbell press to train the upper pec, but if you train it through a full range of motion, the way most people would tell you you should do it, it's probably more of a front delt exercise. So we gotta go back to the question, at which point is the demand transferred from the chest to the shoulders? So if we have the pec delt continuum over here, we'll see that flat, primarily chest, upright, primarily shoulders. Based on all of this, it doesn't really matter in terms of when the demand is transferred from the chest to the shoulders, but rather the point that I wanna illustrate is that when you get to 45 degrees, it's probably more so on the shoulders than it is on the chest. The incline barbell press is more of a shoulder exercise that just so happens to work the chest than it is a chest exercise that just so happens to work the shoulders. And if you choose to view it this way, you can include it in your strategy where you need to to maximize your return on investment of time and effort. If you use the incline barbell press as a shoulder builder, there's some distinct advantages that you have over an overhead press. Number one, the muscle stretch the most is recruited the most. You don't stretch the front delt to the best of its capacity when you're doing an overhead press because you don't go into a position of shoulder hyperextension. And if you did, the direction of effort would not oppose the resistance, therefore, total fucking waste of time. So if you want to get into that position of hyperextension where the effort is still opposing the resistance, you have to use an inclined barbell press. And the 45 degree angle is probably going to be perfect for you. And some people might say, well, that doesn't sound safe though. Hyperextension? Well, here's the thing. Safety, as it relates to safety, anything you perform poorly is not going to be safe. If it's done intentionally, deliberately, under control, then I don't see why it's unsafe. There's a lot of things that people do that are far more unsafe than training their shoulders on an incline press. Another benefit would be that if you view it as a shoulder exercise that just so happens to include the chest, because the chest is included, you can use more weight than you can press overhead. Now, even though that weight is gonna be distributed between the chest and the shoulders, the greater weight used, the greater demand imposed. And the more that you impose a demand, the greater return on investment that you're going to get. So this should change the way that a lot of people look at the incline barbell press performed on a 45 degree angle bench. It is more of a shoulder exercise that just so happens to include the chest than it is a chest exercise that just so happens to include the shoulder. Can you use it as a tool to increase the demand at the, on the upper pec at the expense of the shoulder? Yeah, modify the way you do the movement. But if you do it traditionally, it's more of a shoulder exercise. If you like this information, share it. A lot of people don't see it this way. A lot of people don't ask the right questions. 
and therefore they don't get the right answers. You like the information for yourself, like I said, click the fucking button at the bottom, subscribe to the channel, and I'll keep fucking bringing it like I just fucking did.